Hi, I'm Firefighter Erskine with the Ventura County Fire Department. Today, we're at Firehouse 27, which is actually very similar to your home. We're here for 24 hours a day. We eat, sleep, and train here. Follow me inside for some important safety tips. This is the kitchen. This is where most house fires are started. To prevent kitchen fires, we have made a kitchen safety recipe book. The first step in this book is preparation. Here are a few do's and don'ts to keep in mind in preparing your kitchen for cooking. To start, remember to keep the cooking area clutter free. Don't overload cords, electrical appliances for overall kitchen safety. Keep clothing away from cooking surfaces. Wear short sleeves or roll them up. If your clothes ignite, remember to stop, drop, and roll and get first aid attention immediately. You should always have a fire extinguisher handy in your kitchen. If you do have a kitchen fire and you need to use it, Engineer Mike's gonna show you how to do that. If there's a small fire in your home, you can use a fire extinguisher. You're gonna use the pass method. You're gonna go ahead and pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. And that's how you put the fire out. Thanks, Mike. Now that we've prepared the kitchen for cooking, we're gonna go over the five ingredients for kitchen safety. The first ingredient is keep an eye on what you fry. Nearly two thirds of all kitchen fires start on the range or cooktop. Don't leave food unattended on the burners or the stovetop, especially if you are frying food. If you have to step away from the stove or leave the kitchen, turn off the heat or flame and remove the pan from the burner. The second ingredient, stand by your pan. While cooking on the stove, use a pot holder or oven mitt to hold the pot handle while stirring the pot to prevent burns. Do not stand with your face over a pot when you are taking the pot cover off. The steam that accumulates can blow up in your face and result in burns. The third ingredient, turn pot handles towards the back of the stove. Turning the handles backwards helps prevent accidentally tipping the pot over. The fourth ingredient is to keep a lid or cookie sheet nearby. We're gonna go back to Engineer Mike to find out why. Fire needs three things to exist. It needs fuel, oxygen, and heat. Here we have all three. I'm gonna show you the simplest and most effective way to extinguish a grease or an oil fire. And that's simply to cover it up. You can use the lid from a pan, as long as it fits correctly, or a cookie sheet. You're gonna to wanna to leave the lid on until it cools down. And always remember to turn the heat off also to the fuel. If you take the lid off too soon, it'll reignite. And that's how you extinguish an oil fire. Adding water to a grease fire is very dangerous. The water is heavier than the oil, so the oil rises to the top. It doesn't mix with the oil, and it converts to steam, carrying all the oil and grease, which are now on fire, out of your cooking utensil and igniting everything around it. Let's show you how it looks like. And remember, don't ever try this at home. Thanks, Engineer Mike. Now for our fifth ingredient, microwave and oven safety. Do not use metal utensils or aluminum foil in the microwave. Only use microwave safe plates and pans to avoid sparking a fire. For the oven, make sure it's empty before you turn it on. Be vigilant and careful when opening and removing hot items. Use an oven mitt. Turn off the oven as soon as you are done baking. In a lot of cookbooks, there is an extra section in the back with more good information. Our recipe book has one of those as well. Check smoke alarms at least twice a year. Create and practice a fire escape plan. Practice a home fire drill at least twice a year, both during the day and at night. Finally, remember if there is a fire, leave your home immediately and call 911. Thank you for reviewing our kitchen safety recipe book. Stay safe in the kitchen and thanks for watching.